My name is Sergei Kutrubov, and I'm a math major. And I'm sitting down with my math professor, Dr. Stanka Guadarama. I'm going to ask her some questions. Because I was looking for a liberal arts college, and um, when I decided I want to teach, I decided that I wanted to be in a place that actually valued a person who is interested in many very different things. If you're a math researcher, you generally have, you know, your your agenda for research and you know you concentrate on higher level mathematics and at Rockhurst the expectations of scholarship include more work with students and so I, I was really excited about that because it's a way more versatile environment so you can you know study mathematics and art, mathematics and economics, mathematics and biology, mathematics and anything a student is interested in and mm -hmm. you can try to make those connections. Well generally it I try to reconcile my interests and the interests of the student. So, you know, we first try to make a good match and then depending on that, we try to model our projects. So, for example, um, in the fall of 2008, we had a big math and art project that resulted in one uh, big exhibition, so an exhibition of artwork motivated on fractals. and. Uh, so there were two students, one who was an artist who did that part, and then the student who was more interested in the mathematics of it. Not that both didn't do mathematics, they both did, but um, one of them was interested in you know, pursuing further uh, studies in mathematics. Well, in, in a straightforward lecture, students are passive, so you just sit there, listen to what is being told to you, and then what you are supposed to do is pretty much mimic and I, I did teach uh, more traditional mathematics at Arkansas and it was a lecture format in which you, you know, present the theorem in mathematics, you draw some examples and you send the students home to do some homework where they have to replicate the examples that you had and maybe, you know, work on different problems. Now that works, you know, there are lots of people who have actually gotten that education. I myself was one of them. But it, it requires that you really, you know, have a lot of initiative on your own and you know, go to the book and figure out problems and you know, try to think through those on your own and things like that. And so if, if you don't have a professor that has enough time to give you, uh, that can become quite cumbersome because you, know, you get stuck in places and things like that. But um, when you have a more inquiry-based classroom, uh, you, you actually give the student an opportunity to develop the ability to learn on their own and to make conjectures on their own without pushing the mathematics before they have thought about the reason why they would be learning those, or at least that's what we try to achieve. Collaboration is, is an asset that you're going to be using anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think developing it in the classroom is good. Plus, it gives you the opportunity to listen to other people's way of thinking. So, you know, you formulate your conjecture and you have an idea of how you want to approach it and maybe some other person has the same conjecture and a completely different idea of how to approach it. And so then I think, you know, a much richer discussion arises from two different perspectives actually coming into the discussion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, both of them might be perfectly fine, different methods of solving a problem or approaching a problem, but just seeing that such a different, you know, ways of thinking exist, I think is very valuable. Okay. Definitely, okay. definitely. I think there is not much of an opportunity for exploration-based activities in classroom of 100 and 150, mm -hmm. and that's one of the challenges that big universities face nowadays. And so it's, it's way more fun to teach in an environment like this. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to pause you.